Welcome back to the Sweet Talks podcast. If you cannot tell if you're watching this episode or even if you're listening, we're all dressed up in NASA and we NASA outfits, astronaut outfits. Astronaut. As, a, as a matter of fact, For October, we always do it. Yes. Every episode. Yes. And we have the biggest flat earth man here. <laughs> right? Is that is that what it's called? Yeah, you want to. The flat Earth Man is fine. Okay. <laughs> okay, although, okay. Although there's a there's a music musician that goes by that name. So how about how about Flat Earth Recruiter? Okay, okay. the biggest Flat Earth Recruiter here, Mark Sargent. I mean, Mark, you are the biggest influence in the Flat Earth community. You have millions of views all across YouTube and social media. You've taught many people to not just believe what they are told, but to even question it. Welcome, Mark. How you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. Of course. We're really, really excited. Yeah. I'm excited as hell. Yeah. I mean, this is something we've been wanting to do. Like, like we told you when you got here, uh, we've been wanting to like broaden out and like bring more people, different ideas to this podcast. I mean, with the flat Earth, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I think we're all very excited. Yeah, especially I feel like we all have like. Um, different views especially danny like yeah. he's more on the fence with like you know what it could actually be like a really a uh, real thing and yeah. then he's kind of on the other side a little yeah. bit so we're kind of <laughs> 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 we, we want you to try convincing us just open our mind to it and all that yeah but also too i'm like um i'm probably like the one that's like most against it but at the same time i am very like uh curious to a lot of like the beliefs and like sure. why you believe the stuff and whatnot. Oh, they, these are really nice. These are heavier than I thought they'd be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're going to get a forearm workout with that. Nah. <laughs> yeah. It'll be fine. <laughs> but so, but uh, I wanted to ask you to start this podcast off. Yeah. How did you, were you always a firm believer of flat earth conspiracy or? Oh, God, no. No? No. No, so, not, not by a long shot. So how did you become a flat earther yourself? Conspiracy boredom. Believe it or not, uh, I was in. If you never get married or have kids, and I didn't, mm -hmm. you have a lot of free time on your hands. Huge amounts of free time, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you get. And, and and I was there when the internet was young. I mean, dial-up internet. I mean, where you had to wait for everything. And uh, so slowly but surely, I got into. You, you go down, down a lot of rabbit holes, a lot of different conspiracies. Yeah. And I would looked into just about every conspiracy you could think of, everything you could think of. We won't name names. To the where I, I got to the point, this was in the documentary that was on Netflix, where I just one day I was like, oh my God, there's nothing left. I, I finished it. I finished all the conspiracies. <laughs> there's nothing left. But there was one sitting there. And I, no one wants to look at it. Everybody mm -hmm. in the conspiracy world doesn't want it because it's ridiculous. It's, it's silly. It's the only thing we debunk to kids. And I said, okay, you know what? I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll look. I'll I'll spend the time and I'll, on over a weekend. I'll just knock this thing out. And be like, okay, this is stupid. Because I I have an opinion on just about every conspiracy there is. Some I like. Some I don't like. You know, JFK. Yeah, I kind of like that one. Uh, Bigfoot uh, having Elvis's baby. Not so much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not so much. Probably not a not a starter <laughs> for that one. Is that like a real one? Uh, dude, there's everything oh out there. God. It's kind Bigfoot of it's kind having of, Elvis. There's a category for just about. It's kind of like porn there's a category for everything right there's a there's a clickable thing for every <laughs> yeah, fetish you can think of <laughs> same thing with um uh conspiracies and so i looked at this one i'm going okay i'll knock this out in a weekend and i'm staring at it and i'm staring at it and the more i think about it over the weekend the more i can't tie up a lot of loose ends mm -hmm. and then the next thing you know uh it three days turns into three weeks turns into three months and then finally nine months later i'm like oh god i can't i can't do it i can't prove the globe anymore. I'm really surprised you guys don't have globes here. Oh, I mean, I, I'm, I, the fact you have NASA outfits means I'll have to kill you all later. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's no globes here. I thought you like you would have like them sitting around. But it's fine. It's totally fine. It actually, works out because you guys are all in white and I'm in black. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> because flat Earth is the villain in this yeah. case. So anyway, I, I, nine months later, I gave up and I said, okay, I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a series of videos, put them out, and this was in 2015. Put them out and, and, and then do the thing you're not supposed to do. Put out all my contact information, my name, my phone number, my oh street my address. Oh oh my. Just throw it out there and see what happens. Because I'm thinking, who's going to come at me? And honestly, I needed answers anyway. So yeah. it's like, it, worse comes to worse, I'll, I'll just rip all the videos down once it's over. And the opposite happened. I had people contacting me from all walks of life. 
you know, people calling me up just completely, you know, it's like, okay, dude, I was an air tra traffic control. Okay, dude, I was in the, I was a pilot in the military. Oh, okay, dude, I was a, I was an engineer that built stuff. It's like, it's not that crazy. Here's why. And, Whoa. And, yeah, I know. Um, so they were very like angered or like bothered. Would you say? Or? No, no, no. no. They, they, were were on side. Oh, they were on, on their side. side. Yeah, they were on, on my side. side. Yeah. Oh yeah, my yeah, yeah. gosh! I was I was hoping an academic would literally call me up and say, "Okay, here's where you went wrong. You forgot to carry the two. The whole thing. You ripped down your YouTube channel down. And you can you can go back to your normal life." Oh, so a, originally, originally you were trying to debunk. Everybody the tries to debunk this. Nobody likes, uh, sorry, circle back to your original question. Yeah. Nobody likes Flat Earth when they see it right off the bat. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Everybody hates it for obvious reasons because we're told as a kid. Every other conspiracy we don't tell to first graders. But with this, they put the globe in the classroom and literally, I, you probably guys don't remember what happened in first grade or maybe you do. They, they say, oh yeah, by the way, we used to think the Earth was flat. Now we think it's, now, now we know it's a globe. And that's it. And then they put the globe in the corner of your classroom. It stays there for twelve years. And you spin it. And you yeah, yeah. And, and you nobody. That's it. all you have to yeah. do. And it's below Point the American where California flag. California is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody does the same thing. It's like, oh, that's where I live. And then you never play with it again. <laughs> yeah. True. And, or it's like, oh, I want to go there. Yeah. And, and stuff. Wherever I land is where I'm yeah. going. Yeah. And are the people in Australia upside down? You know, so questions like that. And so <laughs> everybody hates it though. And but so everybody, the the T-shirt should literally read, "I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk flat earth." Wow, I yeah. didn't know that. And and so everybody sit, sits there, and it's kind of it kind of it, the metaphor I use. It's kind of like a child's toy, where, oh, it's this, where yeah. you, you're looking at it, and it's like, oh, it's simple, it's easy, right? And you keep staring at it, and the longer you stare, the the more questions you have, the more questions you have, and it just gets worse and worse until finally, you know, your brain fries a little bit, and then you are awoken. Yeah. What what is this right here? As this a this is. Where are the cameras, by the way? Right there, right here. Just these, just these two. Oh, yeah, that one's just two. Okay, so let's let's get the obvious out of the way. So we'll we'll frame this. You are not living in a tiny little rock covered in a little bit of water and a little bit of air, flying through an impossible vacuum of space. You are here. The end. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really, really, really great show. By the way, I think I think the green room. You're out of gin. Yes. So, no, no. So you are living in. You're living in basically a building. Uh, it's not it's flat. The flat Earth part. Forget about the you know the whole thing flat. You're living in a structure, a building that was uh, that was that we are best in bright with walls and a floor and a ceiling. And again, you show this to somebody in the 1600s, how could they prove it one way or the other? You can't. We didn't even have the technology to figure this out until about 1960. And when they did, the government, which is one of your follow-up questions, like, why would they hide it? Uh, which is when, when 1960, when they figured it out, it's like, yeah, we're not telling anybody. We're going we're gonna to keep this a secret for as long as, as possible until we can figure out how, because information is the ultimate power how how to roll this out to the general public so that's they once they figure it out they're like nope nope not telling anybody but we'll get into that so but yeah that's so that's what you're looking at you're looking at a uh, um basically a flat disc flat ish meaning you know of course there's there's peaks and valleys there's mountains and there's stuff like that yeah but both ends line up and then a shallow dome i mean we're talking about something that's what 25 30 000 miles wide and uh, i mean even this dome's probably too high this one's probably 10,000 miles high. How do you, you know, it's so big, it's it's like a giant, it predates you guys a little bit because you were born. 2000. 2000. Oh, good Lord. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm so old. Uh, the, <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the, the Truman Show, the Jim Carrey movie yeah. came out oh, yeah. in 19, oh, I love that yeah. 1998. It's, it's an older movie, but the, the concept was that they built a small version of this in Los Angeles, a big dome that was yeah. 20, 20 miles wide, and they put an entire town in it, and the, but they only he was the only guy that didn't know. Yeah. Truth is, if you kept making this thing bigger and bigger, you could hide more and more people and more and more people. And then after a few generations, who's gonna know? It's kind of like um. Do you ever remember, remember the movie? Um, Shit. Uh, what? Uh, you yeah, you're start, like, starting to sink in. Yeah, you're starting yeah, to make yeah, people yeah. think right yeah. now. So, do you remember the the movie M Night Shyamalan movie, uh, The Village? They, that ring a bell. It, not a lot of people saw it. The concept was there were people, uh, rich, very rich people, that were sick about crime and everything. So they took their kids, brand new newborns, out to a wildlife preserve, and they built a town, and they like an Amish town. And then they said, "Oh, the, the forests are haunted and filled with monsters." And the kids, grow, and it's like, "Oh, by the way, it's the 1800s." And the kids, that's what they told the kids. 
and so the, 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 the concept here is we believe the, the reality that's, that is presented to us. And so if, you, if people show you the globe over and over and over, that's what it's going to be. But, but 500 years ago, this was it. Everybody drew the same thing. You can look up something on the internet. I know you guys aren't looking stuff up in real time. But it's called uh, ancient cosmologies. Mm -hmm. Everybody drew the same thing. They drew that. And 500 years ago, then it changed. And I think it was done deliberately because eventually, if this thing keeps going, you know, up till recently, all people are going to care about is the edge. All people are going to be like, hey, I wonder what's out there. We should, like, put, you know, start tapping yeah. that with sticks and crap. Yeah. Or be, like, so yeah. curious to what's on the edge. Or That's all people yeah. would care about. The, there's a, a, um, a comparison I used to, you guys know what a wildlife preserve is, mm -hmm. right, right? So you, you put, like, a, a bunch of buffalo in a wildlife preserve. A thousand acres, they're not going to care. They're, could be, they're happy. they got water, they got grass, they don't care, right? The fence is right there. They do not care. You put 12 people on that same thousand acres, they should be perfectly fine, right? No. no. All they care about is the fence. It's like, it's like, why is the fence there? Who's on the other side of the fence? Why are we on this side of the fence? It's like, have we angered the fence people? Get some buffalo. We need to sacrifice them to the fence gods. Right. And that's how, it w that's how it would go. So, so what do you <laughs> believe is on the other side of the ice wall? Narnia. No, not Narnia. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, I was about like, to say, <laughs> hey, <laughs> for real? No, no, not Narnia. By the way, I've got some, I got some fun things for you guys. Ooh, okay, okay. Okay. Oh, wow. Thank some you, of our, some of, our thank you. some of our street activism guys uh, 3D printed these. Hey. Oh, wow. That's cool. Uh, so. Quick pause real quick. Yep. If you're listening to this episode, Mark is like uh, showing us a flat earth model. Like a diagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, diagram. this one was made by one of our guys who was in the Netflix documentary. His name's Chris Pontius. Uh -huh. And he he started out making the, the original ones with because he, he didn't fabricate the own, his own plastic domes with like uh, cake domes. You know, with the little thing yeah, on yeah, top yeah. Yeah. For, for cakes. And uh, and we started building those things. And he he was absolutely amazing. So he gave me this. He goes, he goes if you ever go out there and start going. And, of course, he gave me this right before the pandemic. And uh, so I haven't had the chance really to take this with me. It's like, all right, cool. I'll take it to mm -hmm. these guys. Yeah, I got to say it's very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a cool it's a cool visualization of, of what's out there. So I don't I don't know if I mean to throw you off, but you think there's a there's throw a dome. Off. Around. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so 70% 70, 70 of the people, there's, there's actually a big rift in the Flat Earth community about this. 70% of the people in the Flat Earth community believe that there is some sort of dome-like structure. Like this? Yes, oh, like that. Wow. And other people oh. think there's just no dome. However, if you run into the no dome situation, you run into the problem of, and I'm not trying to freak anybody out because I don't know how many of your listeners, I, I, we'll simplify the physics, uh -huh. which is vacuum think of space movies vacuum cannot exist to non-vacuum without some sort of barrier it will immediately equalize uh, you know sub submarine guys deep uh, undersea drilling guys will, will tell you the same thing so what happens so like let's say there's a vacuum uh chamber above this room right here mm -hmm. right a valve you pull it what happens it's not like the movies it's not like so we only have two minutes of air left get the duct tape <laughs> it's not like that <laughs> yeah. it's absolutely instant it's violent i mean it's the the, the pressure equalizes uh, uh, amazingly fast well why why did that happen right you know that's because that house so the, the vacuum will defeat gravity any day of the week any day of the week the question is when you walk outside this room why is our air still here and you say what do you mean it's like well the air you, you would mean because of the atmosphere well because of gravity supposedly supposedly gravity is holding the the, the the air down what we're breathing remember what we're breathing in right now is not nothing Right, but you can't tell. I mean, because it's mostly transparent. It's uh -huh. it's actually it's not it's not even um, mostly. It's like twenty percent oxygen and eighty percent nitrogen. Doesn't really matter though. The point is, you go outside. Why is at? Why is why are, can you still breathe outside? It's like oh, gravity. You mean the same gravity that couldn't keep the air in this room from going upstairs? That same gravity. So what happens? What what went wrong? And so then you're saying, what's your point? My point is, is that the air is being kept in because of that. Because of the barrier, so because it's the, called atmospheric pressure for a reason. So yeah. then, when we send up like drones or like cameras up into space, mm -hmm. what happens with the dome? Space. It gets yeah, yeah, that's I feel like okay. that's a whole this other. Is, topic. Topic. This is no, 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 no. But it has to do with. Yeah, it, oh, it is. absolutely has 100%. to do with this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's go into the whole NASA thing, fanboys. Yeah, and I know all you guys. <laughs> <laughs> aren't, aren't, you guys aren't huge fanboys, but I love the committal. Fact, what's the patch? Oh, space shuttle. Yeah, the space shuttle project hasn't even been. We haven't. We discontinued that back in the '90s, I think, or the or early early 2000s, around the time you guys were born. We get that shit in the backyard. So yeah. everyone uses what? You got a space shuttle in the backyard? <laughs> I mean, we could build one. Oh, I suppose you could. <laughs> so 
what, what I'm getting at is uh, uh, everybody that goes and tries to debunk that and leans on NASA. Everybody says, well, it's like, okay, why do you believe that the Earth is a globe? Immediately people go, especially outside of this country. I ask people outside this country all the time. I go, okay, inside this country, I get it because Americans believe you know, that we went to the moon, rah, rah, go, we're mm -hmm. the best. You know, Why do you Sweden people, why do you believe in the, the Americans went to the moon? They all say the exact same thing. They say, because it was on television. And I go, and? <laughs> and they go, and they go, it was on the news. The Americans would never lie. And I go, do you know us at all? We, that's and what they, we and do. They, and they say that the, the flag in the thing is waving. Like yeah. Oh, air. dude. We wanted to jump oh. on the moon landing because I feel like okay. that's where a lot of people Let's jump on the moon landing. lose trust with, like, NASA, the government, and then leads them into believing something like okay. this, right? Yeah, is that yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to, you have to go to the moon landing first. Everybody does. Well, the Americans went to the moon. Okay, let's look at that real fast. So the Americans from 1969 to 1972 supposedly went round trips to the moon like six times <laughs> with no shielding, no radiation yeah. shielding at all, because the only things that stop radiation are lead, gold, and a whole bunch of water. And they went with aluminum and plastic. None of the guys died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. There's still four of them limping around today, including Buzz Aldrin, if I'm not mistaken. Was it because of a race, though? It was oh, the space, space yeah, race. the space race, right? Space yeah, race. yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do the space race, which is space race between the United States and what was then the Soviet Union, which uh -huh. you know defaulted back in the early '90s, and now it's the the um, uh, just Russia and a whole bunch of other countries. So there was supposed to be this space race, right? And then you know the the, the Russians, they were called cosmonauts back then. Mm -hmm. Cosmonauts, they're doing all amazing things. And then all of a sudden, we take the lead, and it's like, <laughs> oh no, we get to the moon. And then as soon as we get to the moon, they quit. They just stop going. And I'm going, that's never happened in the history of sports, ever. It's like yeah, the first well, guy gets across quit. the finish line. Everyone's yeah. like, oh, uh, just pack it in. Let's go home. And they never, nobody tried. The only Americans went to the moon. Nobody else even tried to go to the moon since 19. It's 50 years ago, 50 years, which is why I don't think it's a coincidence that the Artemis program is, uh, is currently on the pad. And they're trying to do it. And I keep laughing at them. It's like, you'd never be able to fake it. You could fake something like that in the 60s and 70s because right. there was no internet. There was only three channels of television. You could fake a whole bunch of stuff. And they did. You try to fake something now. The internet will just light you up. Yeah, cool. I mean, think questions, about, questions, questions, go, questions. Go, yeah. go, go back to um, like, like everything, every production that's ever done now, there are nerds in their underwear in Nebraska at 3 a.m. <laughs> dissecting everything, right? It doesn't matter. It's like, like, like people don't remember like the Lord of the Rings, the first Lord of the Rings in, t in 2000. When it came out, there was a, when the hobbits were leaving the Shire, there was a car driving off and off a road in the corner of the frame, but nobody caught it because everyone what? was watching the freaking uh -huh. hobbits. Yeah. And they had to rip everything out of the theaters. They're like, oh, no, no, we got to, we got to fix this. And they had to fix this. Multiply that by a million now to where you've seen it. I mean, any, any, everything gets caught. Yeah. Everything. You cannot make a mistake on the internet whatsoever. And so I, I, I kid with people. I said, look, if you gave me a dump truck full of money and said, okay, we need to fake, you need to fake the moon mission like Stanley Kubrick did, if you know who Stanley Kubrick yeah. is, we need to fake, I go, get the hell out of here. There's no way. I'd be scared to death. I couldn't do it because, you, because it all comes down to one weak link. Just somebody screws up somewhere, and then, you know, again, that nerd staring at it, it's like, oh, look at that. <laughs> the star. <laughs> that, that's. That shouldn't be there. That nerd. <laughs> I'm gonna, there's, there's something fucking completely wrong with that. Seriously, there are people that take every, I mean, I, the people with so much time on their hands, which take Blu-rays frame by frame of everything that's ever made, and they just stare at it. And they look, it's like, you know, if, the, if this water bottle moved from here to here without me, do, you know, doing it, it was like, it's like, they oh, I, catch see, it. I see it, I'm going to post it, and then it, you're busted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's over. So, so do you believe that, like, we can't send anything into space because of that dome? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, the, the space program, what they figured out, what, okay, let's, let's give a little history here. So imagine this. Imagine in the 1950s, around 1960, we figure out that Antarctica isn't this continent that looks like Australia covered in snow. It's actually stretched around the entire edge of this thing. Uh -huh. Right, right. Well, then you got to figure out, it's like, okay, because they were looking for it for 30 years. From the late 20s, really, as soon as they got airplanes, they were, they were flying, the United States Navy, flying, 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 because the, the distance, the, this white area out here is probably a lot thicker, but for you know, yeah. it's, it's probably thousands of miles in. So for 30 years, they're looking, looking, looking. And so once they find it, they're not going to tell anybody, we made some assumptions here. They find it around 1960. What do you think the first thing they do? You know, if you find the edge, what's the first thing you're going to do if you're a guy? You're going to... 
fucking tell your Jump. homie. Yeah, Jump. Well, well, you, well, you can try to punch through it. You're gonna say, yeah, I'm going to try to go through it, yeah. It's like, get the <laughs> cannon. <laughs> <Bob is here. laughs> bring, in, bring in the missiles. Let's blow this, you know, blow the hell out of this thing. And that's what they did for four years. The United States and the Soviet, Soviet Union was in on it the, the whole the whole time. And for four years, all the nukes, you can look this up. It's not secret, inf- nothing, none of this stuff is secret information. For four years, they fired nukes straight up. Bam, bam. Trying to be, and basically, I knew, and the first couple ones were low megatons, and me, that was when megatons were expensive, where you couldn't just buy them at the corner drugstore. <laughs> like, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was really tough to get megatons, and so the first shots didn't get through. And if you can't bust through something with a megaton device, holy shit! Well, then you're just like, okay, then you're just paint. Then all you're, you're basically you're using nukes as paintball guns, and you're basically <laughs> mapping out the sky because sooner or later you're going to have to send rockets up and you're going to have to figure out exactly when you have to start rolling them over and going horizontal and then ditching them into the ocean somewhere. Yeah. So that's what the space program basically is. It's a very expensive money sink, a black program where they they take all the money and just try to make it seem like the earth is round. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we don't say round. Round, round could Sphere, be spherical. Ru- yes, there you go. Sphere, globe, ball. This is round. So then, what about <laughs> what about like satellites and all that stuff? Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So satellites. Uh, otherwise, we could, we call them satelloons, or at least some of our people do. Uh, I got to give a shout out. Eventually, I'll have to break out the app. We got a really, oh. really cool app on this, <laughs> uh, and it, it has one of the the one click buttons for for questions. Uh-huh. It's called the uh, the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, built by a, a channel called DITRH uh, out on the East Coast. He's really, really great. But he he did a thing called Satelloons, and what basically a lot of people don't know this. Uh, NASA is the biggest supplier and consumer of helium in the world. Not a secret at all. You're thinking, why would they use so much helium? Because they figured out... To make their voices squeaky? <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, no, I've never heard that one, actually. The, uh, they, 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 u- they use them to, uh, to lift payloads. So weather balloons can lift certain things, but if you get a really, really big weather balloon, uh-huh. and you can tr- you, they don't just pop and then come down. You can keep them up there for a very, very long time. So you can raise stuff around four tons, which is around 8,000 uh-huh. pounds. Well, if you can raise something on a balloon, 8,000 pounds, why the hell would you need rockets? Rockets are just for show, for the most part. The big stuff is, mm-hmm. is head up. And most of the bandwidth, by the way, the, you know, people say, well, you know, our high-speed internet, isn't that going on satellites? No, no, mo- it's still all underwater cables. Long time before you were born, kids. They, uh, the, what they did was for phone lines, they took the, um, the phone lines and they took ships with huge amounts of wire and just dragged them down underneath the continents. And that's what they did. There's, there's wires connecting everything. And then they just upgraded them to fiber optics, and so that's where most of the uh, bandwidth is coming from. So, if, like, s- stupid question, but no, like, there are no stupid questions. <laughs> no, this is probably pretty stupid. <laughs> but if we took like a balloon, right, and let's just say we we're able to go all the way, like we would just hit the top. Eventually, sure. So which how, which lead? <laughs> so how come like no one's ever done it to like prove it to where they get like a weather balloon and a camera and then have it? flow all the way to the top so that the balloon would stop excellent question and i don't usually do I, do I get a gold star uh, yeah you do yeah. I, I don't i don't usually get that one because general civilian weather balloons can only go up so high before they blow there's there's no way you can in fact i think even military can only go up so far the weather balloons usually they max out between 120 and 140,000 feet mm-hmm. that's not very really high i mean airplanes cap out uh, commercial airlines cap out under 50,000 feet Oh, 50,000. 50, oh, yeah. I flew down here and I think we were at like 38, but in, which is several miles up, but that's not that high. So if you're talking, a, even if this thing was shrunk down, you know, even if it was 1,000 miles high, yeah, weather balloon's not going to get there. Civilian, they've had a lot of time to work out the precautions uh, when it comes to this. Uh, you know, the Antarctic Treaty, which we can talk about, uh, which seals off Antarctica forever. And then as far as physical things, things that we never got in our future that we were supposed to get, uh-huh. yeah. which was like, you know, everyone, it, yeah. you guys are, of course, you were, you remember the, the, the cartoon series, The Jetsons? Yes. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Flintstones, Jetsons, yeah. right? Well, the Jetsons, everyone knows the Flintstones, but the Jetsons never happened. You know, the Jetsons is like, oh, floating cities and flying cars yeah, and ours, robot yeah. servants that were overweight for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> and <laughs> it just didn't make any sense. But, but um, th- that was a future we were supposed to have. Nobody has flying cars. If you had a flying car, oh, yeah, sure. And I think older civilizations, which is a whole other thing we could get into, which is we're not the first people to rent this apartment. 
not by a long shot. <laughs> we our civilization uh, only go only, only goes back on broken like five thousand years. But if you ever you ever guys ever watch Ancient Aliens or any of that other stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know there are older civilizations that go back predate. You know that you're talking about the real pyramids or the Bosnian pyramids or Bimini Road or Puma Punku or Machu Picchu, Sunken Cities off Japan, Sunken Cities off of India. We're not the only people that do this. Now, were there other civilizations that maybe discovered it earlier? Probably. I think you can only. I think a civilization can only go so far. And when, as a mass, they kind of start realizing this, then I think the game is up. And I, then I think you're seniors that have to graduate at that point. So, so does that mean like, so you think people were here before us? Yes. Like, like the cave, aliens? Like cavemen or like? No, 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 like no, no. Like older, that? like older versions of us. So like, so I mean, oh, shit. we're in the year 2022, right? Yeah, well, so, oh, there's a whole other thing. Why do you think it's 2022 right now? We're going to take a quick break from this podcast and we're going to have a word from our sponsor here at BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an amazing therapy service that's provided online. From it's online. It's online. From there, you could video chat, or if you don't want to show your face because you're a little bit shy, then you could just message them. And that's the best part, too, because if you're, if you're shy, a lot of times you don't want to go into those offices, wait in those lines. A lot of people are like, they're nervous or they feel insecure, like feeling like they have to go out and ask for help, mm -hmm. right? But when, when it's through a screen, it's a lot easier, mm -hmm. too. And you really should not be feeling that way. And that's where BetterHelp comes in and it helps a lot. I have known many, many people that have gone to therapy. And at first I kind of thought therapy was like, ah, but you know what? After talking to them and seeing how their lives have changed so much for the better after going to therapy, I highly recommend therapy and going through BetterHelp. It's definitely, it's definitely worth a shot if you're dealing with things. I'm a really bad overthinker. And I've actually been a lot more vocal with saying that on the podcast. But that is like a huge mental health issue. And you do, it's like, it's almost like a muscle. Your brain's a muscle, no? No, it's a, it's like a big fucking muscle. Yeah, you gotta fucking. Especially you, yours. You gotta work it out. Okay, because I got a big <laughs> head. Okay, but you gotta work it out. Like if there's issues, if there's like things that you're slacking on, you could actually work out parts of your brain like that. Just changing the way you think and even talking to a licensed professional. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online, which makes it super, it, it's super accessible. It's super easy to get to. Get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapist anytime you would like. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash sweet today to get 10% off your first month. That's better, H-E-L-P.com slash sweet. And back to the rest of this podcast. Because yeah, that's, yeah. that's just what media says. I mean, in China, it's like more, twice that number, and is Israel it? is twice that number. It's oh yeah, is it's your, it really? Oh yeah, it's your four thousand in China. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, I didn't but, know but, that. Oh yeah, but they had to induct. You know, they had to normalize it for everybody. It's like, oh, well, we can't have everyone with different dates. So, you know, the 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 Western side of things, so, the West. Wait, wait. So, do you think that people, the people that were getting far before us and were here far before us to you, yeah, do you think? their technology was where ours is today as well? i think i think some were, were were better and some were less uh there was a wonderful story I, I don't necessarily want to quote scripture or anything but the 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 tower of babel was a great great story the simple story is that the first civilization was so unified they figured it out immediately and they were supposedly going to build a bridge like right in the center you just go straight up it's like oh no no we're, we're going up there we want to see what's outside there by the way that uh, i didn't forget about your question about what's outside here it's not narnia <laughs> as far as i know nor is it middle earth the uh, so a bridge a bridge that goes up to the top and you know god looks down it's like oh crap they're gonna make it <laughs> so so he's like uh different languages scatter you guys yeah tear that thing down we're, we're gonna start over so um can i you have a question no go, keep oh going. Uh, let me let me circle back to what because i don't want to forget this what's outside of here right you know you're saying okay well, what's outside you know usually i don't get that question right away but and that is why you know first off it's not space <laughs> so the the one of the, the the common misconceptions is this little thing like oh, we'll just use this one yeah. it's just flying around in space you see that graphic <laughs> all the time yeah and, like, and the well, scientists make jokes it's like look it's the flat pancake planet it's like no what we're saying is, is there's no space it's just sitting there on somebody's desk or you know in a lab or or in a bigger bigger place who's to say if it was me i this wouldn't be a one-off either 
So you probably have you know, a whole bunch of these things around. Could be thousands. So have you seen uh, Rick and Morty before? I haven't. Wa- I, I know of it, but I haven't. Why? Did they do an episode? Because there's this one episode where uh, Rick, the scientist, what he creates is he creates um, like basically a whole entire civilization yep. in order to power, uh, I think, like his car or some shit like that. <laughs> and in that civilization, they're you know they're working. They don't know to them. They think that they're just they're just regular like humans. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So then what they do is they're like, okay, we need all this energy. We got to work. Why don't we create a mini civilization? There you go. So is that kind of what you believe in? You believe that we're, we could just be a civilization that's sitting on maybe someone that's a lot bigger than us? Now he's getting... Yeah, now, now you're going into the ethereal parts of this, which is a civilization within a civilization. Stuff, stuff that's been talked about in Men in Black and Outer Limits. And Gulliver. And, and, and g- g- Gulliver. Very good. Gulliver reference. Throwing out old <laughs> school. Nice. Uh, um, Black Mirror and, and stuff like that, which is uh, which I love because it was an entire civilization inside a freezer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like like an old freezer that would need to be defrosted, but 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 yeah, there was there's been science fiction people writers have been talking about this for years, mm-hmm. years, 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 which is uh, uh, in fact the before the Matrix, people don't remember uh, before the Matrix, there was also a movie that came out very very close called The Thirteenth Floor, mm-hmm. and the cons and that was based off a 1970s movie in Germany called World on a Wire, which is based on a 60s book called Simulcron Three, which is when you get to the point we can get into like the virtual reality part of this when you start building civil simulations when all of a sudden do you realize as you're building it you might be in one yourself so so if you built something like this in fact there was a wonderful outer limits episode where, which i use clips of in, in some of my videos mm-hmm. which is if you as you were building something like this like you know say we tried to build something like this micro i mean as our tech gets better who's to say we couldn't build something with seven billion little things in there but uh, as you're building it, all of a sudden you're realizing, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> is it is it possible? And that was the whole concept of the 13th floor movie, which I highly recommend to people, which was what happened was when they when they were inside the simulation, their simulation, when they came out, they started looking around going, wait a minute, don't, don't the same principles apply here? And so they started trying to feel out their universe, you know, to like to say, like, for example, there's um, we'll go into science. And, and by the way, I absolutely believe that's true. So, so there's it's like a matrix. Very, if it's this right, yeah. then it's probably digital, meaning yeah, that's the construct of it, and we live in it. But if it was built like that, I mean, from be, we see it as mechanical because we're in here, right? We can knock mm-hmm. on this, we can drink this, and you know, it all seems very, very real. But outside of this, but that's only because we're in it, right? There's there's a thing in science called um, the double slit experiment. Very very old physics thing. <laughs> what? He's, he's not touching himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> which, which says that outside of that green wall, there's a hallway, right? Uh huh. Yeah. How do you know there's a hallway? Because That's we went to that hallway. Yeah, but you're not there now. Yeah, because we came inside the room, and but we know that there's. Gonna do be ya? Out. Do ya? Because you're in. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? Because of memory. And the same thing will we'll apply it to GTA, for example, because I, I did right, a, I right, did a right. video on this, which is there's a thing in, in, in video games now, which a lot of people don't know because we play the games. Mm-hmm. And we, it's like a, we experience. It's called um, flashlight graphics, which is when you're facing forward in a game, whatever it is, you're seeing everything absolutely rendered the way it is because you're staring right at it. Mm-hmm. Whatever's behind you, though, is just blobs. It's because just white. It's well, it's it's, it's, it's like it's, pixels. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's yeah. completely pixelated behind you because you're not looking behind you. Why we want to draw what's behind you? You can't see it. And it's like we we do this in every game that there is to save resources, <laughs> right? It's crazy. I'm thinking like I could see behind you though. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you can't see. You can't see Lecter behind you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, but you but you can see behind us. And That's tell what us I that. can I can see behind you. But then we get into the whole thing of how how you know am I really here or are you the only one that's here? Oh, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> Uh, hell. Well, I know, right? We're all having the same thoughts and the same conversation, though. Wouldn't you think that right? we're all here? So, yeah. so you believe in like uh, NPCs? Oh yeah. You do? <laughs> oh, do you, yeah. oh no, there's a lot of it. In fact, okay, let's get into NPCs. What the? In, in the world of in the world of GTA, which I don't play because I don't like the criminal element so much, but I appreciate the the time they spent on the game. Nothing to the I do too. I to do the too. developers, which is in the world of GTA, most of the people running around there. It's an entire army of NPCs. Uh, people that are listening and don't know what NPC is either a non-player character or non-playable character. Mm-hmm. Take your pick. 
which is people that are just walking around. Now, back in the old days, boys, back in the old days, before there were NPCs, there were just notes. They were on the ground that you found. Yeah. There were no people walking around. There were just notes. It's like, it's like your next clue. It's like, oh, look, I need to go to this dungeon, right? And then we stuck the note on a tree. And then uh, eventually somebody said, why don't we just put a person next to the tree? And you can talk to that person. And then eventually that person can walk around. Then you have to find that person. That person just stay by the tree. And then you just keep moving it forward and forward. Next thing you know, that person's got a whole family. You know, he's walking around doing all this stuff. And that's, that's the origin of NPCs. Are there NPCs in this world? Oh, yeah, you bet there are. <laughs> You've seen them. You know. Go to, go to, go to, <laughs> you've seen them. And sit in a park. Alive, sit yeah. in a park. Go to an airport dem- someday and walk around and, and, and look at somebody I'm not going to pick and say, that schlub right there. You really tell me that guy goes through his entire life doing that, What you Dude. know, being that person? That's that's what he is? I ain't going to lie. I think about that shit, too. Not that He's I, background uh, noise, man. Yeah. That's, that's all he is. I mean, yeah. Well, so when he goes back to his house <laughs> exactly exactly he goes back to his npc exactly. house <laughs> frank are you an npc with his npc I'm family no no i, I believe I b- i'm a big believer of if uh i think therefore the i therefore i am right uh-huh. so if you can if you can grasp the concept you're probably fine you're probably I see probably fine i don't i don't know for sure maybe who knows maybe there's <laughs> i be- i have always believed there were three levels in, of npcs uh-huh. uh there was there was gen- there was um generics, generics. Which were just you know people are just like, fill in space. People have forgot. I'm not picking. Up. It's like th- like that, neighbors and shit. Right. You can't talk to one of those, can you? Or you can talk to them, but the responses are limited. You know, very Dude, limited. So that's when you talk to, to some. Neighbors. Maybe that's somebody you talk to, and you're like, man, he was kind of weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or or it's like, <laughs> or, 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 or you were hope you were hoping for more, right? It's like, oh yeah, yeah. Well, that guy's boring, you know. Or, or <laughs> he, might, he might have had a chip in his ass. <laughs> NPC, no? he might have had a chip in his ass. True, true. But but I also think there's 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 a couple layers above that. One, I think there's interactive. I would consider all you guys interactive. You know, so we're real, NPC. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which which is which is people that can interact with both the 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 generic NPCs that are walking around, and then the higher levels of people, which I call which kind of it's kind of like a heartbeat in a way. But the, the high risk, you know, the high risk NPCs, in my opinion, would be uh, called the creatives. And you know those people. Those are the people, in, I mean, you're in that town, which is the people that have high risk careers. They have really, really creative and they have really, really high highs and really, really low lows. And they can crash either. It's like, I'm so happy I'm going to OD or I'm so unhappy I'm going to OD. But they're in that in that risk and they, their lifespans are fairly short, but they, you know, they, you know, it's 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 a cost benefit thing. What was that that old saying? Uh, greatness comes from loss. So, anyway. So <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to ask like, Dude. why why is it that you believe in the flat Earth theory and you believe in uh, simulations Sim- and all of, like these conspiracy theories? Why do I believe them? Yes, because because they are kind of like out there and you know it's not it's, general thinking. It's a slippery slope. I did not believe, and it's okay. We can we can talk about some things, uh, on, on, but I'll, I'll give you some of the history behind it, which is because they left it in the movie, which I think was fine. Which is, um, it's a slippery slope. Once you see the first big lie, you start questioning. It's kind of like relationships, right? Mm-hmm. If it, it's like once. W- women are notorious for this, which is once once she finds out you're cheating the first time, she'll oh yeah, always think you're cheating. She's always gonna think you're cheating. Yeah, yeah. Right? And that's that's that's, a, a, that's not notorious. That's real. Yeah, and if and if it's a big cheat, it's it's different to say, oh yeah, he had this weekend. But if you were cheating for like ten years, oh no no no, then the whole thing the whole thing changes. So once and. Let's let's frame this a bit, which is so there are lies in just about every look. Our world is based off of some for, form of deception. You guys are it seems like really really great guys, but Thank you, you guys lie every once in a while. There's little lies and there's big lies, yeah, for and sure. there's and there's lies. I mean, every part of our life in business and politics and sports and uh, um, entertainment and even yeah science and journalism. There's lies all, all over the place, but there's government sanctioned lies, which are called either scandals or tr- or tragedies. And everything else is a conspiracy. Uh-huh. Once you believe in one of those outside the box ones that mainstream media doesn't like, you know, they don't want to uh-huh. talk about. Once you believe in that first one, you start revisiting things. So um, my first one, I didn't believe. I grew up on an island north of Seattle. I could have been more sheltered. I honestly, I didn't even know there was a, an, another religion outside of Christianity until I like went to college. Honestly, did not know that. Wow. And I saw JFK in the theater. 
the Oliver Stone movie from uh-huh. from from back when in the day, and in a packed theater, and this was you know predating a lot of stuff. The internet wasn't doing anything, and I remember everybody. Ca- I came out of there going, "Holy smokes, people do lie!" Right? I was that I was that naive, that innocent, and so then I started kind of getting into other things and other things. Looking at this seemed like a natural extension, meaning it's like okay, I, you know, I was willing to visit this and willing to visit this. But here's the thing, once there's, there's a trick here, which is once you start believing in that, then everything else is back on the table. You have to realize right. that everything you've ever questioned, it's like, every, in fact, I can't even, uh, people that I used to, uh, I, there's, there was something, uh, the, the beginning of the clues, my first paragraph was, I know people that are actually convinced that uh, the entire royal family of England is made out of lizard people, right? <laughs> oh, I've, I've actually heard that. I believe in lizard people. There you go, sure. Like Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> he's lizard too. There, there you go. I believe and, in that. But, but, if I, but the same people, if I go to them, I say, oh yeah, by the way, Flat Earth, that, that's a thing. And they're like, get the hell out of here. And so, <laughs> it's like, what about the lizard people? Didn't you like, <laughs> try, to, try to do that with me? And uh, so th- anyway, it's a, it's a slippery slope. But once you believe in that, so now I can't criticize anybody. So beforehand, yeah, I'd be like, you know, if somebody came up and said, oh, yeah, you know, Bigfoot had Elvis's baby. I have proof. I was like, oh, get the hell out. Now I'd be like, yeah, I'll give you a few minutes. Sure. <laughs> Why? Why not? Why? Because what? I don't have a leg to stand on. It's like, look, I opened my day with that. So I have, I have, I have nothing. <laughs> so I, I cannot criticize. So do you ever like kind of have trouble believing in the flat earth theory? when there's all these um kind of like laws like scientific laws and theories that kind of go against the whole entire theory but they're theories no 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 No, they're they're laws that well (laughs) good that's that's a very good point because we had the the people that get into flat earth they have to basically relearn i hate to throw this on you guys but you have to relearn a bunch of science Mm -hmm. because it's like okay so because again we hate flat earth so we use science to try to to, we use the tools of science it's like okay so the earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour and it's going around the sun at sixty six thousand miles an hour and it's travel the whole thing's traveling like a dish plate at f- half a million miles an hour, and then that thing is spiraling into a plate. Well, yeah, no, I mean the the solar system. If you didn't know, is supposedly you know the sun in the center is supposedly moving sideways at half a million miles an hour, which I don't. I have. don't feel that shit. Well, exactly, exactly, <laughs> and all these all this motions, and you absolutely feel nothing. Well, uh, so like you think like if we we're spinning right now, like I'd feel dizzy. No, <laughs> no, but there are certain things that would happen. For example, so like centrifugal force, meaning on a merry-go-round, right? So merry-go-round, if, if you're hang, you know, spinning on the outside, everybody's you know, hanging on for dear life. But in the center, you can just turn in a circle. Everybody knows. You don't even get dizzy, right? Yeah. Okay. So that works on everything, including a globe. Well, if this globe is covered in water, why isn't there a big bulge of water around the equator? In fact, why is there any water... Uh, why is there any land around the equator at all? You remember, like, Saturn's rings. But yeah. but with that, another thing that could be kind of used against that is the Earth spins once per day. Oh, yeah. So yeah, if you're on a merry-go-round and you spend 24 hours and you spin it within those 24 hours and it makes one rotation sure. at the end of the day, sure. you're not going to feel dizzy. You're not going to feel like the need to, for you to be thrown off. You're an excellent, that is an excellent point. However, which, and I don't, I don't right. generally harp on that point, which is like, I'm not going to say you're going to feel dizzy. However, the things on the world, again, the water, you, you drive in a, in a car, right? Holding a glass of water. You make a sharp left mm-hmm. turn. You know what's going to happen. <laughs> it's yeah, it's right. going to go everywhere. There's a reason why we have lids on coffee. So, but that, but that being said, the water, if it is spinning at a thousand miles an hour, which is fast, I mean, it's faster than the speed of sound then that water should be bulging up on the center. But we also have a uh, gravity that works mm, for it. Okay, let's get into gravity. Okay, so gravity, and Neil deGrasse Tyson, by the way. Being your ass the <laughs> no, no, these are good questions. Yeah, no, are, I'm, no, I'm glad. Good conversation. No, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm like glad. This. I like no, no, this. gravity gravity always gets brought up. Gravity is the magical thing that supposedly solves uh-huh. all of this, yeah, right? Everything. Gravity is a magical molecular force. Science will tell you this, right? Gravity, Neil Tyson has multiple times on camera said this, and any scientist will tell you this, which is gravity, it, he says that gravity is a magical molecular force that pulls things down to the center of a ball. Uh-huh. We say that gravity, I say, you know, not all, we don't all agree in our community on this, which Mm -hmm. is I say that gravity is just this magical molecular force that pulls things straight down. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's it's almost identical. However, that force is weak by comparison to, say, the vacuum, you know, the, which is if I take a straw and, you know, I can suck the water out of this bottle, Uh right? Of course. I defeated gravity with that, and that's easy. That was a piece of cake, right? Yeah. So why doesn't the vacuum of space do the same thing to us? 
because of gravity. Gravity, yeah. Because that dome. Or well, that's just it. Gravity, okay. Like, or kind of like, uh, have you ever, <clears throat> like, taken a straw and, like, sucked it up, the water, the thing, and, like, held the top? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the water doesn't fall? Nope. Yeah. Is that kind of, like, supporting you, or is uh, that not? I don't know if it helps or hurts anyone. It's, uh, thank you, by the way, for bringing that as an example. <laughs> no, nah, I was just trying to no, throw no, that No, 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 no. Because right. I'm thinking, like, I vacuumed it up. Every <laughs> yeah. The gravity's not pulling it down. G- gravity <laughs> is uh, gravity is the cure-all, but it's not strong enough. Not even, not even remotely close. We're going to take one more break from this podcast, but it's a little different because I want to tell you a story about the other day, and this is, like, an actual story. I, I went to the restroom, right, because my stomach was hurting bad. I'm okay. not even kidding. Okay, okay. I took a shit, right, uh-huh. in the water, uh-huh. and the water turned green. No way. The water turned green. Did it really? Yeah, it did. What? And I don't know, like, what it was up, so I searched it up, and it basically told me that something was wrong with my kidneys. No way. No, nah, I'm fucking around. Oh, but, wow. but that's basically what Pretty Litter does, right? Pretty yeah. Litter. And this, Pretty Litter is a sponsor for this podcast. Yeah, it is. Imagine that was like an actual thing, though, for humans. Well, you've never had green poop? No, I'm saying if oh, like, like the, our the water. water would change colors depending on if there was something wrong with us. No, yeah, that I wish we had that. But you know who does have that? Pretty Litter. Pretty Litter. And, and it's for your, or cats. your cats. They have a super light crystal base, which changes colors according to, you know, if your cat has something wrong with them. So it lets you know. And also, too, another thing about cats is they're so stubborn and selfish that they won't tell you when something's wrong with them and you won't know until it's too late and those veterinary bills <laughs> oh are my gosh through insane the roof you know we all love our furry creatures we all adore them and we want them to be safe and on top of that pretty litter ships right to your door it's a monthly subscription and also too it lasts a long long time i think like one bag could last up to a month if you're like if you're really good with it and then it turns into those little crystals that you could just pick mm, up and scoop the yeah. fuck out right or you could eat because they look kind of tasty But But they don't stink. That's another thing. Nope, they don't stink. And also, too, another thing, if you have a dog and you have a cat and they all live in the same household, dogs usually like to go into the litter, but the... The crystals that Pretty Litter uses, the dogs, they they actually, like, don't like eating it because to them it's like, ugh. It does not taste good. It's really good. So Pretty pretty Litter helps keep my cat healthy and keeps odors down. You and your cat are going to love Pretty Litter as much as we do. Mm-hmm. Go to prettylitter.com slash sweet to save 20% on your first order. That's prettylitter.com slash sweet to save 20%. Prettylitter.com slash sweet. And oh, yeah. Pretty Litter, if you're watching this, I just want to say thank you because you gave my cat some toys and they fucking love those toys. So that's it. Pretty Litter's watching this. I I appreciate that. Just want to say thank you. Thank you. That's dope as fuck, actually. Yep. And back to the rest of this podcast. Make sure to get Pretty Litter. And then also, how how did the flat Earth look? That's more than one question. Okay, so we'll we'll go to just the dinosaurs. (laughs) (laughs) You know the other one though, right? Yeah, I do. Okay, okay. So no, that's great. In fact, let's let's we won't even bring dinosaurs into the equation right now because there's some of my my friends. There's like dinosaurs are fake. (laughs) It's like they fabricated the bones. It's like okay, I I don't really care. For me, it's like carbon dating is is really really screwed up. That I know. Which is um, uh, let me before we get into meteorites, I have to bring this up really fast. Mm -hmm. Which is carbon dating. If you know anything, it's like how we measure how fossils uh, how how old Mm -hmm. fossils are. If you ever get a chance, look up something called the coelacanth fish. It's C-O-E-L-A-C-A-N-T-H. It's, it's an ugly fish with a bunch of extra fins. Just, just remember that. So the, um, by the way, are you hot? Are you hanging in? Hang I'm, hanging I'm a little hot. All yeah. right, all right. Just, just checking. You look hot. <laughs> 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 Not in that way. Hey, thank you. Thank what you. are you? No. Or, or maybe I, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, so the coelacanth fish has a bunch of extra fins, and it's been extinct for at least 70 million years, right? 70, uh-huh. can, there's the fossil. There it is. It's sitting in the fossil. It's 70 million. We carbon dated it. It's 70 million years old. Uh-huh. Problem was, then the British government found one off of uh, South Africa in 1940, and then another one off of Madagascar, another one off of Mozambique, and next thing you know, National Ge- Geographic is swimming around with them. How did they screw that up so badly? Because... You either believe that this fish has just been kind of hanging around for 70 million years and it looks the exact same as it does now as it, you know, it did then, uh-huh. or the carbon dating system is wrong. And I, let me throw one more. I will get to your meteorite thing as uh-huh, well. Of course. Which is he, uh, people say, well, you need to believe in the Loch Ness Monster. You guys know what the Loch Ness Monster yeah. is? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so, Nessie. so are there old din- – yeah, Nessie, perfect. Are there old dinosaurs swimming – aquatic dinosaurs swimming around in the lakes of the U.K., deep lakes of the U.K.? Right? Maglodon. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, but megalodons in the ocean. Yeah, it really w- wouldn't matter. But yeah, I believe in the megalodon. Sure. Me too. Sure, sure, sure. Cryptozoology, a great thing, which we'll talk about in a second. But I will get to your meteor thing, I swear to God. We'll go do the meteor <laughs> thing, then we'll die. <laughs> which is, I know I'm, I'm kind of... No, no, no. no, no. no. Oh, yeah, so we love it. We love it. So, um, this is interesting. So imagine, so, so people say, okay, do you believe in Loch Ness? And I go, yeah, I do. And they go, I, I go, why don't you? It's like, well, because it's been extinct for at least 700 million years. Oh, you mean like that fish over there that you were absolutely wrong on. So you were wrong about the fish, but... Nessie, you're 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 solid on that one, and and they're like, yeah, and I can see the look in their eyes. Like, yeah. yeah, sure you are. Um, the meteors. <laughs> let's, let's, we'll we'll do meteors, and then I'll talk about cryptozoology a little bit, which is okay. which is fun. You guys like that? Which is meteors are 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 fascinating because they are part of the system. Are they part of this mechanical system? Sure. Do I know how exactly how they work? No, I know how I would do it. Uh, you know, a friend of mine get, threw me the idea years ago, which was like, okay, you just take some metal ore, use a rail gun technology, fire it at a shallow angle, let the, uh, the friction burn it up, try not to aim at any major cities, and you should be fine. What I think is interesting now, now that there's, what, six billion smartphones in the world, is no one's taking a video of a meteor hitting anything in real time. Well, they should have videos of like in them, the air them coming. Like oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've like, seen those, and it's like broken glass and. Oh yeah, the, well, the Russia, the Russia thing you're talking about. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that one was a little too close for comfort. The, whoever was <laughs> fell asleep at the switch at that day. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, it'll be fine. Just fire it off. It's like, dude, <laughs> that's like a populated area of Russia. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't aim over there. There's there's rumors of videos of like UFOs that are like like banking into that thing trying to shoot. <laughs> it down because it, but anyway the the point is is that i believe that the and most of the stuff is just lights in the sky and meteors are just part of the effect yeah you, you see craters there's big craters every once in a while but i think that's just decoration that was added between civilizations the big one in arizona for example so so who's the one that's firing off these uh meteors see see this guy Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had that same question. Though. Oh, yeah. Who okay. is? Who is? Okay. Bro? So, who's firing off the meteors? Uh, that, that is the big question. Who built this place? Right. Okay. First of all, let's get the obvious out of the way. This had nothing to do with us. Not at all. We had nothing to do, camera, nothing to do with the building of this. Uh, whoever built this was an older civilization. It's one of two, two tracks you can take either an older civilization that's uh, much more powerful uh, than ourselves, way more powerful than ourselves. It's like be us sitting around this. Uh-huh. It's like, <laughs> you know, let's toy with them. Or the divine. And at that point, really, you're just kind of splitting hairs because uh-huh. one man's golden spaceship is another man's deity. I mean, come on, if a golden spaceship landed in the middle of Los Angeles, you know what would happen. There'd be two groups of people that would show up. One group of people, the nerds, be like, oh, they do look like Avatar. You know, they're blue. <laughs> or the, and the other group would be like, we must form a church to the blue people. <laughs> yeah. It's like, start building it now. All you heathens, worship the blue people. And that's what it would be. So, um, but, it, but it was definitely not us. Definitely not us. Now, you know, I grew up a religious person. So even if, even if this wasn't directly made by God, if God subcontracted out the work, <laughs> then whoever whoever <laughs> built sub- it <laughs> he subcontracted it <laughs> oh, he does i'm sure he has some you know subcontract you know like santa and elves type thing yeah. so you know d- whoever built it is at least one step closer to having god's phone number than we do uh, so there you okay. go okay one god's phone one thing i want to go back to right yeah. as you said we may be borrowing this on someone's desk right sure so like if we want walk into the antarctic right and we walk miles and miles and miles right right do you think we're going to end up in a different civilization? If you could get out of this. Yeah, like sure. let's say you can get out. Well, yeah, and that that's also a big question, which is because I don't because, believe. Oh, sorry. well, no, I don't believe we can get out. I think one group, uh, I think you could ask for asylum to get out. There's a wonderful story. Don't let me forget about cryptozoology, which is uh, there's a wonderful story about the there was out of all the countries that were down there in Antarctica, sorry, out there in Antarctica doing doing their research. There was only one that stayed during World War II. It was Nazi Germany. Indiana Jones, not just a movie, which is uh, in the, the, the Germans were willing to do anything to win the war, which was like if they could find an alien civilization, if Harry Potter's wand was somewhere, they were going to go look for it. If the ring, you know, Frodo's ring oh, 
wow. you know they were they were gonna go so f- they believed in everything oh yeah that. well yeah yeah i mean you know anything to win they were yeah. they were out to take the world oh why not sure, sure. Why, why the heck not hey yeah i mean there was what what is uh vince lombardi uh you know the yeah the, the famous football. yeah famous football his quote was was perfect and the germans kind of embraced it which was winning isn't everything it's the only thing <laughs> And so the, the Germans, the, the story goes, is that Germans were down there in World War II, sorry, out there in World War II, and that after World War II, we sent, well, I mean, that part's true. We uh, look up Operation High Jump, where we went out to try to root them out. You know, uh, after w- the, the second Japan surrendered, we sent a big carrier fleet down there. I keep saying down there. It's, it's an old habit. <laughs> <laughs> so which is uh we, and and the the germans asked for asylum they they talked to whoever built this place you know they went to the edge kind of like a high school dance and that like a high school dance they're like yeah sorry if you leave the gym you can't come back you know you can't come back in you, you oh. once you once you're in the dance you're in you can't go out and drink in the parking lot and come back in or yeah. or, or do any of that stuff so oh, so God. oh so anyway no you can't you can't break out you, you might be able to ask for permission to get out but as far as I can tell, no, we're sealed in there. Then the question becomes, are we sealed in for because we're a box of kittens that should be protected from what's outside of here? Right. Or are we a box of scorpions that should never, ever be let out for any reason whatsoever? <laughs> oh, and it's like the Simpsons. Uh, the there dome. you go. The dome. Trappuccino. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The Simpsons movie, there's been a lot of references. Right, 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 right. Yeah, in right. The, yeah, they for they, everything. They, they predict every oh, yeah, I don't know. Well they that, predict, that they know everything. The, yeah, yeah. The, the the Simpsons Dome movie was really great. It spoke yeah. to a lot of people, which it was did. awesome. I actually liked it. It was cool. But do I think you can get out voluntarily? Yeah, probably not. I mean the Antarctic is sealed off. Uh, let's right. talk about the Antarctic Treaty really quick. So let's say you wanted to go, right? Mm. Antarctica you know, this big, huge continent that, that surrounds us is sealed off forever. Yeah. Meaning uh, the Antarctic Treaty was put into place in the 19, 19, around late 50s, early 60s, which said that no corporation from any country can set up shop there. No one owns Antarctica, and it's not even up for review until 2041. But why, though? But that's a great question, but nobody asks. In fact, not only that, let's see where you're going here which is let's say you're an oil and gas company right you can you oil and gas companies can do anything they want because they have huge amounts of money they can start fracking in your neighbor's backyard like tomorrow you know they just get briefcases of money out and yet these same companies aren't even allowed to talk about it that's the part that that was the big red flag for me which is not only do they not get to come out there they they should be running full page ads in the newspapers all the time it's like it'd be great so many jobs and money and stuff we could we could do out there and I know full well what happened. You know, the a government, somebody shows up and says, oh, yeah, it's national security. You can't do it. Yeah. And whoever replaces you, give him my business card. And he's going to call me. And, and, and they just do that to the major companies. Antarctica is fascinating. Absolutely yeah. fasc- fascinating. By the way, do you know that most of Antarctica? You been? It, no, God, no. No. It's horrible. <laughs> it's a horrible place. That's, by the way, it's the <laughs> other thing, which is whoever built this 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 particular thing was genius in the negative reinforcements, meaning... You turn around at, at your own, at your own peril. Meaning, when you we say you're a ship back in the day, and you're trying to go out to the edge, trying to go out to the edge. Well, first thing you're going to run to is colder, colder water. Finally, icebergs. No ship captain. It's the scariest thing ever. Is like icebergs. Yeah. Then you get to this, when it's just ice and snow and more. There's no, uh, there's no plant life. There's a few penguins on the coast, but there's <laughs> nothing there. You eventually you're going to turn around on your own. Plus, a lot of people don't know that um, that Antarctica, even the part they tell us, is it, sit, it sits. Most of it sits at like fourteen thousand feet high. It's the highest continent in the world. And altitude sickness kicks in to most people around 7,000 feet. So, so it's like if, even if you wanted to, you'd probably die out there. Oh, yeah. You're not going – which is why, again, uh, nobody did go do anything out there until um, uh, the, so we got planes. And then we got planes, and then we just start going and going and going. Because the, the look up a guy named Admiral Byrd, Admiral Richard Byrd which uh, flew to the North Pole in 1926, and then whatever they found, they must, I, my theory is, is that somebody had something like this. But let's say you had something like this in the 1700s. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. You got nothing. You got wooden ships. You got horses. Yeah. You're not going to do anything. And then finally somebody says, well, you know, we got planes. We, got, we, we can do stuff now. It's like, all right, send a guy up to the north. And then he finds whatever it is up to the north. Maybe it's some marker. Some people say it's a, a, a giant mountain that's magnetic. That's uh, somewhere at the North Pole. Which that is pulled him? Wait, wait. The what? Why is it magnetic? I don't know. 
It's just, I, I don't know. It's, um, called, it's called Mount Maru. Look um, it up if you, if you get a chance. It's fascinating. But once they found that, immediately, so, so Admiral Burr goes up there in 1926, and they spin him around, and they send, the Navy just sends him uh, to the outer rim and just has him flying around for decades until he finds it. Oh, damn. Have I, have I screwed up your heads already? Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. I still have questions. You guys yeah. want to uh, reset the cameras oh, okay. real quick? <coughs> Wouldn't that be kind of like a way to test out the flat earth theory? What? Is if everybody just started lights up weed. Started lighting up. <laughs> oh. No, yeah. He's not lying. Yeah, no, well, it's no, it's, a, it's an interesting idea, but uh, I think the system compensates for quite a bit of that. Also, but don't forget the factories have been cranking out. Yeah, so, so it doesn't have to be weed. So, so how does that work? Like, let's say if there was like a fires everywhere, would wouldn't we suffocate if there was a dome? No, because it's too high, uh, <clears throat> and it's too big. You know, don't, don't you know? Think about the. Uh, are we recording? Yeah. We're okay. Recording. Yeah, yeah. So think about climate change, by the way, because people ask me quite a bit. It's like, oh, hey, do you believe in climate change? Conspiracy people don't believe in climate change. Well, I do. Uh, because uh, if, it, if we are in, in an enclosed system, you know, it's basically like the inside of a car. Mm -hmm. So if you have, let's say, any given point, we'll say, I don't know, 800 million cars running at any given mm -hmm. point, they're just furnaces. You know, cars are literally just furnaces with wheels attached to them. That they generate huge amounts of heat. Well, eventually, over time, that is going to affect the system. Yeah. It's no different than, like, bringing a, a propane lantern. I, I was going to use the whole blunt thing, but... Yeah. A propane lantern. Let's say you're in a car and somebody brings a propane lantern, one lantern into the car. Eventually, those you know the, the air conditioning system is going to have to compensate. There's going to be weird hot spots and cold spots. Bring in another lantern, another lantern. Yeah. It's going to get weird. I think that the system is compensated for a lot of stuff, but I don't think it's flawless. I, I think it. I think it's. I think it's strained, which is why we're running into uh, issues right now. So, I've heard like a bunch of uh, people, like scientists and stuff like that, saying like. Like we're just gonna die off, right? Have you yeah. heard that? Um, well, there's like, there's the natural by the way we're treating the planet and stuff. Yeah, that's, does that apply to this as well? Sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, most of the stuff dovetails. You know, go, can transition from the from the globe. Anything that's on the globe can transition to that very, very well. In fact, it's interesting. You look at the um, if you look at like the jet stream on this, it just goes into a big circle, which is fantastic. Uh, on a globe, it's all over the place. It d doesn't make any sense. As far as scientists saying that, oh, yeah, we're doomed, but, you know, they always put the dates way, way off. Now, do I believe there's climate change, which used to be global warming back in the day? Sure, but I believe more in the, in the Great Reset, you know, that it would be done probably by us, by nefarious types before, before that. There was, there was a um, show that we saw that it was a plane that if it went straight on a flat um, earth, yeah, that it, I don't know what it was but it showed that if it went straight then it would um are you talking about it, like the Bermuda triangle it, or are you talking are about we talking like about a plane on a globe versus plane on a flat earth i think it was plane on a flat earth and they showed like the difference that if yeah, the yeah. earth it was around so, then it would go yeah yeah so here's here's the thing with planes uh yeah yeah because i feel like with the flat earth a lot of shit has to do with planes like the way they yeah. fly too yeah yeah, right? yeah yeah so planes when they're flying which are basically just kind of swimming in the air because because you just can't see it you know they're no different than boats you know they're just forcing you know going through the air like that um when if it's on a globe because of the curvature of the earth which is eight inches per mile squared which is eight inches per mile per mile doesn't really matter it, it just means that you know there's a curvature eventually that plane is going to have either have to nose down every once in a while depending on how fast it's going or nose up mm -hmm. depending on which way you want to look at it but I've been on a whole bunch of planes, and that plane is dead. When it gets up to level, you know, it is dead, flat, nothing's moving. I mean, I've, see, I've watched, I've stared at cups of water when I'm bored. And it's like, that plane isn't <laughs> moving. I mean, it's amazing. When, when there's no turbulence, crazy how, how amazingly smooth it is. And yeah. there's this wonderful flight tracker video I have on my channel where I grabbed the, the data from them where they were showing, they track, you know, all flights. All flights are being Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, they did something different where they actually went sideways with it, where they were showing the planes going up and then leveling off and going perfectly flat and going down. What I thought was interesting about that video was, because it was across the entire United States, and they were showing UPS planes and FedEx planes and commercial planes. What's interesting was, is that the entire United States, there was no curvature to it. It was absolutely tabletop flat. And I'm going, what that, why would you do it that way? The raw data is curved. I, the, the data that you're getting is literally the, the plane should be going up and then kind of doing something like this. No, it goes up, down. 
and that's that's how it works. So yeah, that's how I feel. Like when we fly, I mean, when we fly, you just go up, you go straight for and a little bit, and down. then you, you go, go down. down. I mean, yeah, the descent takes a long time. But yeah. but then also too, going back to how you said like the curvature, like you know, you would feel the plane nosedive and stuff. Right. But not y- nosedive, but nose down. Yeah, it would yes. nose down. But the thing is. Also, too, like, you know, you're driving a car. Let's say you're driving it slightly uphill. Even if it's, like, just a little little degree higher, In while you're in the car, you're not going to feel like, oh, my gosh, like, I'm about to fall back. Mm, well, uh, well, if it's steep enough grade, you're going to. But, but, but <coughs> oh, to, to, on, you, to your point, the um, uh, the plane's going so much faster. You're talking about mm-hmm. a plane's going between five and 600 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm really sad, by the way, that they never allow us. You know, we, we can do planes that can do, you know, sonic booms all day long. Yeah, that'd be sick. Yeah, but they won't do it because they're, you know, at, you know they're, oh, the cows and, the, you know, the livestock. It's like you get People freaked might, out. Yeah. Noise pollution. It's like, no, 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 no. I was a big fan of the, I, the one thing I really loved about the, uh, the series The Man in the High Castle, which was uh, when if Germany and Japan won the war. Germany just ran Concords because the people don't realize the Concords were designed in like the 50s and 60s and they didn't care. It's like, oh, who cares about noise? Get there as fast as humanly possible. And that's yeah. that's how they did. So sorry. What was the question? Uh, it w- <laughs> with the car. right? <laughs> yeah, with, with the oh, car. yeah, yeah. You know, the, car, the, the plane's moving so fast that event again, I'm not I'm not kidding you. You guys know this. If, the longer you fly, which is you would feel it. You would feel these little even if it has to adjust a thousand feet a minute, which is it doesn't it would have to adjust a lot faster than that. Um, you would feel, you know, every, when I'm in a plane and they change altitude, it's like, oh, yeah, we're going from 37 to 36,000 feet. You know, you know exactly when they do it. You can you yeah. can feel that plane. I mean, I have never. Your ears pop. Well, that too. In, in fact, don't even think about the, the commercial airlines. They're easy because you're in those. But mm-hmm. think about high speed planes like the, the SR-71 Blackbird or the U-2 or the Aurora, which doesn't exist apparently. Uh, you know, when those are flying very fast. In fact, let, let me bring up a plane thing real fast before you, which is. Um, there, there's an SR-71 pilot. Uh, it, that plane went from inception to retirement, and nobody knew about it. It was one of my favorite U.S. military things of all time, which is they came out and they retired it, and at the same time told people it existed. So at an Air Force base, it's like, oh, by the way, we're retiring the SR-71, and the press is going, the what now? <laughs> and, it's, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's our spy plane. It's like, I thought you didn't have spy planes. Well, we don't, and this one's retired. It's like, what are you going to replace it with? Oh, nothing. <laughs> we're not going to replace it with anything. It's like a lie. Sorry. Absolutely, it's okay. Absolute lie. So, but this SF, because of that, that some retired SR-71 pilots would go around doing book tours, and they'd be going around the country. This one in particular guy, he was saying that um, when he was up at like 70,000 feet, cruising altitude, he could see from Phoenix, he could see the coastline of Los Angeles. And and th- not only that, and it's like, wow, that's really far. How can you see the coastline of Los Angeles? And, and not only that, but you could, he said if he looked north, he could see where the Canadian Rockies meet the United States. You know, that's huge mm-hmm. amounts. And it's like he didn't even understand. He couldn't see the forest for the trees, with, meaning that eventually it's one of our biggest points. What gets most people into this is the whole curvature thing, which is when you look off into a boat off in the distance, eventually that boat is gone off the other, you know, should be on the other side of the hill, right? Mm-hmm. It's on the other side of the curve. The reason why we're even talking right now is because HD technology came out. HD technology completely changed the game, which was now you could buy a camera for $500, 600 bucks, or yeah. whatever it was, and you could go to the beach. Boat is gone. You know it's gone, but you can't see it anymore, and it's got to be over the, what, is it broken? No. Okay. Is it is it over the curvature of the earth? Well, it must be. Well, take you, your zoom, that's HD, you know, crank up something like on a Nikon P900 or 1000 or whatever it is. You can zoom that boat back yeah. into frame. And see that they're still in front of us. Yeah, and and you couldn't do that 20 years ago. The resolution just w- wasn't very good. It'd just be this blob. You didn't know if you were looking at a boat at all. Well, eventually, sooner or later, that boat has to be on the other side of the hill. Uh-huh. But we can, the only thing that limits us, the only thing that keeps us from, from basically seeing forever mm-hmm. is the thickness of the atmosphere. Meaning we can see stuff at, you know, depending on the conditions, 100, 150 miles which is crazy far. I mean, there, there should be, it should be way, way on the other side of the curvature, mm-hmm. but we can see it. And the, in fact, the, one of the other questions that people throw me is, okay, well, that's true. Why can't we see Japan from California? <laughs> why can't we see Europe from New York? And why can't we see Mount Everest from everywhere? Because it's the highest place. It's like, well, because you're not looking through nothing, right? This is just trans, you know, this is mostly transparent, what we're doing. Right, right, right. But over 10 miles, it gets thicker and 20 miles. It, it, if you guys know scuba divers at all, they'll tell you that. It's like, mm-hmm. 200 feet down on a brilliant summer day, there is no sun. 
yeah, down yeah. there because the, the sun just can't penetrate. Well, this is just a thinner version of that. So, so, so going back to that, because um, I I heard that you know going back to like with the boat, yeah, and then with uh, the Nikon, yeah, I heard that if you were to focus the the camera and if you were to keep it on the boat while the boat keeps going, how the boat appears to be, it appears to disappear from like like this. Right. So as if it was going over right, right, right. the horizon. Depending on what, yeah, that, that, by the way, is also the genius of how this place was built. Because depending on what you're looking at, the atmosphere will, yes, there is some refraction, no question whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But it also comes down to, we've got some, uh, I'll mention this in a second, there's, there's something called the Black Swan video. Yes, I have seen videos where it appears, well, we're not shooting them necessarily, that the boat is disappearing from the, from, from the hull up. Yeah. However... It also depends on how on your altitude, your the barometric pressure, humidity of the day, blah blah blah. But there's some. There, in fact, there's you'll get this because there's a um, uh, Santa Barbara. There was a wonderful video shot from Santa Barbara. So th you guys got oil rigs off off the coast, and you guys have seen them, right? Yeah. The oil rigs out there. Well, there's some, and they're far enough away that you don't really mess with people, I guess, too much. But there's there's one off Santa Barbara that's at six miles and at ten miles, and we shot live video from the beach one morning. And what was amazing was not only did we see, we caught both of them, you know, lined up. So one at six miles, one at 10 miles. Not only did neither of those get chopped at all mm -hmm. from the bottom, but the big thing was the horizon was behind both of them in the distance. So when people come back to me and say, well, you know, and say, oh, well, you know, they, they, maybe there's some chopping happening. You know, maybe it is being cut off. It's like, okay, where is the curvature exactly? Where is your horizon line? Because huh. it's not in front of it. It can't be front and behind at the same time. I know it's kind of tough to explain without the video. Yeah. But I'll, I will send you the, the video. It's fantastic. So anyway, the point is for every video, every person that sends and says, oh, here's the hole, you know, being disappeared is the boat. It's like I've, well, we've got dozens that say the exact <coughs> opposite. Absolutely amazing. And when you get the sun off in the distance, that's where it gets even creepier. Oh, okay, let me throw it. Forget about boats, right? Because you guys are going to bring this up sooner or yeah, later. Yeah, the sunset. The sunset. What happens to the sun off in the distance, right? Yeah. Would it completely blow your mind if I said the sun isn't setting? Yeah. It's okay. rising. Yeah, because it's, it is setting. It is setting, but it's not going down below the horizon. It's just vanishing. If you have a, the right filter on your camera... The sun will go off in the distance and it'll get smaller and smaller and smaller. And then at one moment, there's some fantastic videos out there, especially on DITRH's channel, where it just goes, it just, it just disappears. disappears. But to the naked eye, because you're, you know, you can't tell. It's like, oh, yo, no, it's, it's, it's getting, you know, it's going to the horizon, going to the horizon. Yeah. yeah. But with the cameras, they've changed everything. Now we can see it just disappear, which is what, what it would happen. Because it's like a the, candle. There you go. Candle going off in the distance. If a sun is small enough, say 50 miles wide, which is still huge. I mean, it's bigger than twice as big as this city. Then whatever it is, which is why you would get, we can't even, we can't even make the sun in this small enough. The sun in this thing right here is hundreds of miles wide. And that's as small as we can get it with the lights. I mean, you know, we'd have to make it just a fraction of that, but it's, it's tough to do. Because when we draw it on, like we do an artist renditions of it, we can't make the sun smaller because you couldn't be able to see it. But if it was only 50 miles wide, oh, yeah, it'd light up exactly what you would want it to light up, which is one of your questions might be, why are there time zones? Well, you know, if the sun, if, the, if it's like this, why can't we see the sun from everywhere? Why isn't it lit up? It's because it's really, really small. So it works kind of as a spotlight. Yes. Almost exactly like a spotlight. So don't we revolve around the sun? Right? Or is it the sun mm -hmm. revolves around us? No, we, yeah. We, we do, right? Science will say that, that, that we revolve around the sun. We say that everything in the sky that you see there is no different, and I know this dates me, uh, no different than if you're in a planetarium. Do they still have planetariums? Here? Yeah. Okay, you go into a planetarium. Wait, what, is what is that? Oh, a planetarium is where you lie on your back and smoke weed, and you look at a whole <laughs> bunch of... No, I do yeah, as fuck. Oh, yeah, because okay, on the yeah. weekends, what? No, seriously. So during the weekdays, it's science, <laughs> right? It's like it's like, oh look, there's the stars. And on the weekends, they do like laser Floyd. Yeah. Right. And people just get baked and stare at the scene. It's like, <laughs> oh wow, man, I wish I could see him live. And that's Frank Saturday. That's, that's sick. Saturday. That's, that's dope. That's my every day. I'm sitting <laughs> down thinking, <laughs> looking at stars and shit outside. <laughs> but that's but that's what it is. Oh, they're just they're just lights in the sky. They're just pretty 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 lights. Oh, let me throw one more out, which is which is um the um, uh the moon. This will this will blow your mind, which is the moon. Not only is it the same size as the sun, but it's generating its own light, meaning it's not reflecting the sun at all. And you can prove this to yourself because we. In fact, a guy called me up. I'd been in flat Earth like a year, right? This goes into the whole you know ridiculous stuff, right? He calls me up and he, he calls on a radio show and he goes, "Dude," he goes, "The moon, it's it, he goes, it's generating a cold light." And I go, 
what do you mean? It's colder out at night? We know that. He, he, goes, he goes, no, it's generating a cold light. I go, I don't even know what that means. He goes, dude, you can measure it. He goes, I've said too much. And he hangs up. And I'm going, okay. <laughs> so hey. fuck. He hangs up. <laughs> so, like they're listening to him on so the, the government's line. after him. Conspiracy people do have, you know, the whole over the shoulder. It's like, what the hell? Did you hear that? You, <laughs> they're clicking on these headphones? So a lot are of you, them. Are you, lot. are you wired? What the hell? <laughs> What's happening here? Who a do you, lot, who do you work for? <laughs> a lot what? of them do that. Like they're like. Oh, do they get a little twitchy? Yeah. They, oh, they God, yes. Like, God, yes. Have you ever had like any problems with like the government like try to stop you or something? No, in case they're listening. <laughs> no, 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 I never have. And I get a lot of suspicion for that because people say, oh, why do you get to do this and this and this? I'm going because I don't know. I just lucky, I guess. Sorry, let me get to the moon real yeah, quick. But no, ahead, no, ahead, I, ahead. I never. So so what happens if you take you can go down to the store? There's these point and click infrared thermometers. They cost like 20 bucks. Right. And people use them to test on engines and asphalt. You've, you've probably seen them every once in a while. You can point it at your, yourself. And it's pretty accurate. Right. Somebody said he goes, he goes, you could point at a shadow in the moon shade and it's warmer than the moonlight. And I go, what do you mean by that? He goes, well, he goes, if it's, he goes, you know, you're in the, it, if it's sunny, right? It's 90 degrees in the sun, but it's 80 degrees in the shade. It's always cooler in the shade, right? Mm -hmm. But with the moon, it's the, the exact opposite. I was going, what does that mean? He's going, he goes, the moon is generating a cold laser light that is cooling things down up to 13 degrees Fahrenheit, colder than what what's around it so the moon the, so the shade in the moonlight is actually warmer and i'm going is that even possible and and sure enough i've started looking up this technology we've been able to do it for years now we didn't do this but uh health and beauty people you know cold laser stuff it's it's a thing you go on amazon type in cold laser light you will you'll be able to find this stuff the question is why is the moon doing it and not only that i was the first one to propose this i said if you take a magnifying glass of sunlight you know you can burn things you know ants yeah. and you can light up stuff that you blunt. smoke yeah, yeah. blunt Really? Have you actually lit up a blunt with a magnifying glass? <laughs> Have you, Frank? Yeah, no, I'm about to try it after this. Right probably. on. So, <laughs> so, so, but if you take a magnifying glass to moonlight, what happens? Does it get warmer or is it colder? It gets colder by another degree or so. Wait, so if I use the magnifying glass during the night on the moon, yeah, it'll make things colder? Yeah. Oh, it will, and and it's like when okay. really it should be making it hotter because well it should the be doing something yeah because the sun reflecting so sun is reflecting off the moon that's why you know we it's like oh it's a really bright moon because the sun's reflecting on it's nope so is the it's sun not. cold no 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 I was joking right there it's not a bad it's not a bad question ow it's not a bad question it's it just means no what it means is is the sun the moon are completely and it makes sense they they're not reflecting off they're not doing there's no interaction at all. The, the the moon is complete. The moon is basically a, just a nightlight, an LED nightlight that's doing its own thing. It's a big ass nightlight. Well, yeah, it's a big. It is a big nightlight. Mm -hmm. And it kind of just turns off slowly. Yes, on its own, like it would in a planetarium. People will say, well, you know, what? How do you get, you know, waxing, waning crescents, and all that crap? Uh, Why that? does the moon turn so off slowly, and then the sun just shuts off though? Hmm. Good it one. doesn't though, right? Well, it doesn't. The sun doesn't shut just un off. Un unless you oh. run into an eclipse, yeah. and then it does. In fact, I had a guy call me up. He's he's not around with us anymore, but he called me up and he said, uh, uh, he goes, he goes after the eclipse, and he goes, he goes, dude, he goes, I watched the whole thing. He goes, I I, I filmed the whole thing. He goes, the, the the he goes, nothing is eclipsing the sun. How long was it? Was he what watching it? it? Oh, well, during the entire eclipse process. So which, how long is that? Well, very, not very long at all. I mean, like an hour from beginning yeah, to end. It's not that long. Oh. No, it's not very long. In fact, when it, when it fully, totally eclipses, it's only for a couple of minutes. So he goes, he goes, there's nothing eclipsed. I go, I don't know what that means. And he goes, he goes, there's no object going in front of the sun. It's eclipsing itself. And I go, like the moon? Because that would make sense for us. But we don't think of it like that. It's like, okay, in a planetarium, we just shut down part of the moon. You know, we just make it that way. But with a, there's no sun in a planetarium. Because why would you do it in a planetarium? It, plus, the technology would be extremely hard to do. Yeah. So. So then I had a question. Yeah. <clears throat> wait, so wait, wait, are you gonna talk about the sun or no? Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> um, how like the sun slowly turns off and on. So do we have like multiple suns then? Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. Cause, because there's yeah. a spot like in the world. I'm not sure where it's at exactly, but. The sun for a couple months, the sun will not go out yeah. and it will stay 24 oh, hours of light. Is it that in uh, Antarctica? Yeah, yeah, 30 well, days yeah a night. That, by the way, that's a great question. I'm really that, surprised. That was my question. There's a too. movie or, 30 days a night. It, I, 
Yeah, oh. yeah, the movie. Yeah, oh. there's movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah the movie. Thirty. Va- I just watched that. Just it's a, a vampire, vampire one. Yeah, I know it very well. Yeah, yeah it was. Like, it was a. What, dark, I was like, I watched it with no, not any expectations. Like, that's a really cool vampire movie. Yeah, I love the dope. whole concept. <laughs> super Vampires dope. go to a place where it's gonna be nothing but darkness. They just wipe out the town, yeah. leave, and then blame it. You know, on on people going nuts. Um. Anyway, it's a question that. I wish more people would bring up because it is it is our weakest thing because it b- goes into multiple light sources, yeah. multiple suns, which is okay. Twenty four hours sun in, in in the north, piece of cake. Twenty four hour, hours of sun, you can you can do that no problem. Twenty four hours of sun on this, bro, not really easy to do. Now we have, there's two camps on our side. One that says, well, there is no twenty four hours of sun in Antarctica. I'm going uh, maybe I've got photographer friends that have been down there, and they said there's twenty four hour sunlight down there. <laughs> so, oh my god! But at the same time. Could there be multiple light sources? Sure. Why? Why not? I mean, anything, anything to fool the public. You know, if you're if you're the creator or right. you know mm-hmm. some civilization, it's like okay, how can we keep them out of there? You know, I mean, little little things like that would would keep people pretty quiet. Plus, yeah. again, nobody wants to think about this. By the way, little little things about the design. You know, the um, the oceans are only three percent salt, but that three percent salt means you cannot drink it which means yeah. that most of your exploration is limited to how much fresh water you can carry with you if you could drink the water that you're sailing on oh we would have discovered everything in two seconds but it slows everything way way down the design of this place is very strategic i've always i've always enjoyed the little so do you bits. do you believe that there's multiple suns suns sure Sure. sure, why not? I, I'm not going to shoot it down. Why, why would I? I mean, if because because again, 24 hour sunlight in Antarctica, something's happening out there. So, right. are, is there multiple light sources that are doing it? If that is the case, sure. Because then again, like it's Antarctica, like yeah, and, then, and, and by the way, and, you can't go there anyway. Yeah, you can't go there, yeah. and it's not that popul not that populated either. Oh, no, no, Cause there's because like, there's, I know there's some people out there that just like would rather be it light. All the time. Yeah, outside, yeah. Right? There's, there's only people that are down there are military and military scientists. Yeah. You could go down there. If you wanted to go down there right now, you could spend, I don't know, 15000 bucks, and they would take you to a peninsula with penguins. They'd put you in a orange raft, and they might take you to the, the magnetic south. By the way, the compass does not work in the south uh, Antarctica. Because of the poles, right? Well, th- that's just it. If you have magnetic north, what's magnetic north? Uh, what's magnetic south? Yeah. Eventually, it should dominate. I've had military people from Australia and New Zealand all say the same thing years ago. They said, yeah, the compass doesn't do anything in the south. You get to Antarctica, the compass is just worthless. So it's just like, but like north, north? Yeah, north? it's always north. It, north always dominates. And it's like, well, look, you know, you've seen bar magnets. It should be north and south. Eventually, if you go, di- you know, out this way for enough, south should dominate. South, right. south never dominates, ever. But on the globe, uh, isn't uh, Antarctica always on the bottom? Yes. So so wouldn't that, like, kind of support the whole entire uh, Earth is in a spherical? Because it's always going to be north? No. I, I, know, I know where you're going with this, but no, no. Think, okay, if it's a globe and I... You know, I should bring globes with me, but it's just so against me. I hate them so much, <laughs> <laughs> which is which is if if the Arctic is north and the Antarctic is south, uh-huh. then north magnetic north is north and magnetic south. And I know they say may may move a little bit. Mm-hmm. The point is, is that for this, all you need is magnetic north and nobody would know any different. In fact, you know, people fly around. It's like, oh, yeah, the compass points north. And why wouldn't you? Th- why wouldn't you think it was a ball? OK, so. Damn. Yeah, I was just thinking because I mean our sun is on right now, but what about like like China? China, yeah, is their sun's off. Their sun's off. well, no, well, okay. Uh, no, now, now, now don't don't think of it too general. You don't need multiple suns for every place. Meaning you don't you'd only need multiple suns for the out, outer rim if you were going to need it at all. And again, five thousand people out there, and most of them are military. Who really cares? But when it comes to this, no, no, I mean. The the sun is the, if the sun's here the sun's here and if it's only fifty miles wide then it's going to work out just fine it's going to just keep moving off to the distance eventually it's going to get to China sorry oh uh, so it's kind of rotating at the it's, top it, yeah 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 I mean if you're looking at this thing right here kids which is uh, it, it's like a needle on a record player so this thing is just going to it circles around us now the the question which you you brought up earlier out there which was is it inside the dome or outside the dome yeah. I don't know, man. It could be. It could be either. You know, because if it's physically inside the dome, then the question is, okay, what's holding it there? And you know, there was um, uh, Eric Dollard. Look up a guy named Eric Dollard. D O L A R D. He was a fascinating cat who talked about. He did interviews out of his car, 
And his conviction about the son, he like was. Like savage. He, he was. What? Oh, uh, no, no. He it was. Sound, it was he was way into just alternative thinking. And he wasn't into Flat Earth, but he was saying that the son, he goes, he goes, there's no fusion of the sun. He goes, it's a transformer. He goes, there's, there's nothing happening. There's no. He goes, well, he goes, the sun, he goes, basically, he was d defining. He goes, the sun's just a light bulb. And they were saying, where's the power f come from? He goes, I don't know. Nobody knows. He goes, but he goes, there's no fusion. He goes, he goes, you see some stuff with the solar flares, but the rest of it is, he goes, it's just, it's, it's, like, it's yeah. just, it's, it's not, meaning what it also could be, we'll throw another one at you, which is take a magnifying glass in the sun and you shine it on something. That little point of light is extremely bright. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's brighter than the sun. I mean, there's really light can burn things. Who's to say that the point of light that we don't see up there isn't just being projected by something else? So could it be in or out? I, I could go either way. On that, it's up for whoever built it to tell us. So then, how do you feel about like space? So, so what about you know the pictures of? Remember like the part about me killing you later because you're wearing. <laughs> <that>? <laughs> so, so, how do I feel about the, the pictures in space? Yeah, like the pictures of like Saturn, you know, uh, if, Venus, like just all those different planets, and, and people taking rocks on like when they're on the moon or like the robots when they take the pictures of the rocks yeah. and stuff. Got it. You know, um, like. How, how oh, do you, oh what, how, yeah, how, do, how do I how do I feel about the space? Um, it, treat it no differently than any crime story you've ever read, which is if one thing's faked, it's all faked. Meaning, uh, the, do you remember the movie Heat? Yes. Okay. Yeah. With, with, uh, with Al Pacino. Pacino and Robert De Niro. Okay. Yeah. What is it? Do you remember Heat? Heat, yeah, yeah, the movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was, a, it was a great crime movie oh, about crime uh, movie? about. Uh, um, uh, crews that would rob, you know, bank trucks okay. and Bruce stuff like that. Willis. The what? No, it's, um, it was a song that I was thinking of. I'm oh. sorry. That's all right. You, you can sing. <laughs> no, that's that's bad. cool. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> Is he a singer? Yeah, uh, he he, he likes sing. movies too. Oh, okay. So, like, well, okay. He so, refers, so he so, refers probably the soundtrack of the so, movie, right? So Heat, yeah. when <laughs> one of the guards, bank guard, when one of the armored truck guards was killed, they had to kill the rest of them because, well. If you're gonna kill one you might as well kill the rest because the punishment's the same yeah so if apollo is fake right then why would you make anything real i've had guys come at me and say okay okay the moonlit missions are absolute garbage they're just a hot mm -hmm. dumpster fire but that doesn't mean the iss is fake i'm going why would that be real i go if you're gonna get nailed for one thing you're gonna get nailed for all of it so why would you know there's no point of making anything real so you yeah. fake everything fake everything you freaking can I'll but why it. not why not just tell some of the truth or at least like a part of the truth or or why why fake it like what's the point of faking? okay let's get into that uh, real <laughs> fast which is why fake this why would you hide this why not tell the people that this is where you are but why not give it to them information is power but most of it really comes down to i've been giving this some some thought recently most of it comes down to bad timing which is you didn't figure this out till almost 1960 well civilization's already built Everything's built, the government structures are in place, the economies are in place, everything's set up, everything's working just the way. So they're want. like, why fuck, why, why fuck it yeah, up? Yeah, why so it's mess so, it up? So much of a lie that you just have to keep. Oh lying. my God, think of it this way. Okay, let's say, you know, you're in an Illuminati meeting in a table like this, right? <laughs> yeah. You're, you're all, you know, wearing cloaks and you're smoking cigarettes for whatever reason. It's really dark in there. And somebody says, okay, what would be the worst? What, what's the worst that could happen, you know, if you told people? In 1960, uh -huh. this was happening. Okay, well, it'd be three things. First would be academically, every university in the world. Think of what would happen. Astrophysics and astronomy, gone. Until you, you don't even know how to redefine that. And then the rest of the physical sciences, biology, geology, hydrology, archaeology, anything with an ology has to be rebuilt. Libraries have to be emptied. What do you do? I mean, students, you'd have to just send them home. You wouldn't even know what to do. That's every university. That's just academics. Yeah. Financially, that's a lot quicker, which is you'd have to suspend world markets for months until you figured out what it meant. The stock market would just be in utter chaos. You just have to shut it down because you just couldn't trust it because people would be like, well, uh, you know, what, what industry is going to move? What does this mean in the grand scheme of things? But the big one um, is religion. You know, the, the five major religious houses of the world, um, um, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. You're giving them leverage against science simultaneously, and that's 80% of the world. And you're saying, oh, yeah, by the way, don't beat up on science too bad, even though they've been clubbing you over the head with textbooks for the last five centuries. Show yeah. some restraint. That's never going to happen. They're, they were just light them up. Science would never recover. That's the shortest Illuminati mo meeting ever. People yeah. <laughs> the guy at the end be like, yeah, so we're, we're not talking about this. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm going to put a pin in that. <laughs> and then put that folder somewhere and then burn the folder. They're, they're not going to want to talk about it. Did that join a little too good? Why? So, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, like, speaking of, like, all these lies and stuff, right? Right. Because, honestly, I'm, like, kind of 50-50 about the moon landing as well. Yeah. Um, why do you think that they threw away all their technology or it just happened to vanish or whatever they say you, about it? You you had to because the because yeah, why 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 cuz like that's what makes me think it's not real because yeah. like you have all this technology, why the fuck have we why haven't we been back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. cuz we advanced yeah. so much too. Oh yeah, too. yeah, yeah. So like, Again. like look at like Yeah, yeah, you got th- that's like, that's our future up. right there. That's it. That's what we got. We yeah. didn't get flying cars, we got freaking phones, f- smartphones. That's yeah. what we got. And no, there's no robot servants, nothing like that. The, the why AI. did they? Why did NASA cripple itself? Meaning, after right. 1972, people don't know this. And you can look this up. I put this in, in one of my clues, which was, you the 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 only picture, full picture of Earth from space was taken uh, in 1972 from Apollo 17. You know when the next picture was taken? The full, 2015. Damn. 43 years later, and I know exactly why. It's because they're terrified of faking it. They're, they don't know what to do. As technology got better and better and better, there were people that questioned the, US, the, the Apollo program back in the 70s, but the only where, where are you going to go? There's no internet in the 70s. The only thing you could do is go to UFO conferences and set up a table and be like, oh, I, I don't think the air, here's what's wrong, you know, and just nerds spouting nonsense, apparently. Well, now that same nerd can, can you know, review all the photos from NASA. And you're right, the, the technology, should have, we should have been there. We, there. The space race shouldn't have been like that. It should have been the Soviets put two people, we put three people, small base, bigger base. Time magazine says, has the Cold War reached the moon? That's how it was supposed to go, and it didn't. And the reason was, and you guys know because where you are, is because hol- studios don't have continuity with each other. Even if you had MGM and... Warner Brothers run, try to make the exact same movie at the exact same time, there's going to be continuity issues, and they're right next to each other, yeah. right? Imagine if you've got a studio at an Air Force base out in Nevada and a studio in Moscow. It's never going to work. The, somebody would be like, their, their dirt's too brown, or this is too wrong, and, and the, there'd be no... It's the same reason why they, um, there's no stars in any moon footage ever. Or, or yeah, any, I saw that right, too. Right, because they say footage. the stars are dead, well, the the the, the reason Do why they, they they usually I blame it on exposure. Aren't stars dead? I think no, so. Right? The shooting stars. Well, no, it's not that they say that they're dead. It's just or they're so far yeah, away or some shit. That they're light years away that yeah, you the, won't see it. The exposure setting, which is a bunch of crap, because it's like okay, if it's an exposure setting, take a roll of film and change the exposure setting and take a shot. But the astronauts said, no, we never saw any stars. The reason why, again, the nerd argument, which is a nerd's going to, you know, it's going to stare at it. It's like, hey, the belt of Orion shouldn't be there because everything was time and date stamped. And he'd just work out the geometry be like, yeah, yeah, no, the belt of Orion should be over there or should be behind them. (laughs) And that's it. It's over. You you can only do that once. If somebody, you know, some Illuminati, it's like... Yeah, no stars. And that's it. <laughs> and that's they, they just kill it. I like that guy. <laughs> I the, like, the Illuminati I like, guy. I like that voice. <laughs> Sorry, I have to imitate them a lot. I like that voice. Well, we got an Uber coming in 10 minutes. So okay. I was going to say, if you have any more like burning questions. Yeah, I, I have know. one. What? Like, uh, there's like a big thing with this one guy, uh, like Sneeko, like... Yeah, they're like um, they're influencers that have been awa- uh, around for a while. Yeah, but they've been like really hot on like the Matrix and sure. escaping the Matrix. Like, what it, what does that mean? Because when earlier when you were talking about the dome, right? And I was thinking like, is that the whole goal to get out of the dome? And now you're like you're escaped, like you won. Like what? What's I've got I've got mixed feelings on winning and losing in this particular game. Uh, I don't think by the, the this. This place can only be one of three things, which is, okay, is it a uh, prison planet? Uh, I don't know if it's a prison planet because, you know, it's awfully nice. You know, mm-hmm. there's, some, there's some really wonderful places here. Uh, is it entertainment? Uh, if it was entertainment, a lot more people would be having fun, and there's a lot of NPCs. I think it's more of, of school than anything else. I think it's an education system. I think it's perspective. I think that what's here, I think you're supposed to be here. Let's, let's end with this. Or something close to this. And you, if you have follow-up questions, that's fine. Which is, um, I think you're here because it's cyclical. Meaning this world is 99% conflict. I mean, it doesn't matter how rich, how powerful, how beautiful, how talented you are. There's always something to complain about. Always, always. Money, people always mm-hmm. complain about money. Beautiful people always stare in the mirror. Empowered people want more power and so on and so on. 
Well, if that's the case, if this world is 99% conflict, then what's out of, outside of here, I believe, is the, uh, an unlimited universe. You know, if you want to call it heaven or Shambhala or Nirvana or whatever it is, but I think that is 99% unlimited. And you are there for a much, much longer time until you run out of ideas. I think this universe kind of is r fueled by novelty. Something we ask each other, hey, what's up? What's new? What's happening? You know, because we always want what's new. People are running out of Netflix right now. Or watching, you know, subtitle stuff. Nobody watch, watches subtitle stuff. But that, but that is true. It became like a. <laughs> We're running thing. out. Yeah. It's like, oh look, a new Korea thing. I'm gonna watch that because <laughs> they they make some good stuff. So, but anyway, I think you're there for certain. Let, let me throw the genie at, at you really quick, and then just let me know when that thing shows up. Which is okay. So let's say you're in an unlimited universe, right? An unlimited. Let's say you're in heaven, whatever you want to call it, and. The genie, because the genie gives you a, th a million wishes. I was going to say three wishes, but you know, you're clever. You say, I yeah. want to have unlimited wishes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's okay. you, or you, you go. can say you wish for three more wishes at the end of the There you go. Race. And you just keep hitting stuff. You date everyone you wanted to date. You become a race car driver. You become a fireman. You become a whatever it is, a her superhero, immortal, the most beautiful person on, uh, in the world, and so on and so on. Well, eventually, you're going to run out of ideas. Everybody does. Nobody makes it to a million wishes. They don't. So... What happens is eventually you go to the genie and you say, hey, so I'm tapped out. What do I do? What do I do? And he goes, well, I got, a, I got a thing for you. You're not going to like it very much. In fact, you're going to hate it. But you're really going to dig it at the end. It's like, what is it? Well, you're going to go to a place. It's limited lifespan, unlimited ways to die, most of it's conflict. And, but when you get out of there, you're going to appreciate this like it's brand new. And, he, and you say, well, what's the catch? And he goes, the catch is... You're never even going to know. We had this conversation. And he snaps his fingers, and voila, you are here. Thanos Damn, style. That's crazy. So that, that's what I would, that's, that's the only thing that made sense to me when I was looking at it. Because again, this world is 99% conflict. Is that called um, the egg theory? I don't know if it's the egg theory. It's that, called the Big Bang Theory. You should, uh, you should look up the egg theory because it's very similar to that. Wouldn't surprise me. The only thing that's different is instead of. Uh, you know that just happens once yeah. it happens you're gonna be everybody that's ever been alive sure and then after that after you've uh, lived everybody that's ever been alive now you have your own world see i didn't know that but yeah that makes it's it's not new it's not new there's nothing the same there's nothing new under the sun <laughs> but but yeah that's that's something i i believe in which is we're here for a reason we're here to gain perspective and as far as escaping there's an old mayan saying well, which we all stand up against the government well yeah, yeah you want to you want to rage against the machine hey great no not i'm not promoting the band necessarily oh they're a pretty good band so which is the, the mayans had an interesting saying which was don't live a good life don't live a you know a, a you know a certain life goes, just live as long as you can and i thought that was weird it's like it didn't make any sense to me it's like oh yeah that would make sense because you'd want to stay around and learn as much as you could because well um, you know what's on the other side so anyway there you go mind mind's blown Hopefully. Yeah. Well, That's we crazy. hope. Uh, yeah, nice. we hope we opened a lot of people's minds with this podcast. Yeah. Definitely ours. It was super <laughs> cool learning about yeah. everything. Now yeah. I'm gonna start thinking there's a dome around Earth. <laughs> <laughs> like it's super. It's super. I'm gonna start I, looking outside. And I don't know. Well, when you're when you're talking to guests, flashing these every once in a while, you want to trigger some guests. <laughs> Joe Rogan, by the way, even though he hates us, he loves us. No, I that's I I like watching him too, and, and he does. He'll do, he'll do that. He'll be like, "What do you think about the flat Earth?" Right you know, <laughs> to, to anybody, it's like an astrophysicist. If you hey, what do you think about that? You know, he's waiting for you know people to like develop a tick, yeah. you know, and start losing it. And that's why he tortures that's Eddie Bravo so much because uh, you know Eddie, who's one of ours. Yeah. Uh, celebs, by the way, who are you could yeah he's didn't ask, but I'll throw him out there. People, Kyrie, Kyrie Irving, Kyrie yeah. Irving, Shaq's back in it. Uh, Tyson's back in I it. Be, who, I wouldn't be with the Lumen Island. Who is who's the guy that subbed to? Uh, um, uh, oh crap, Andrew Tate. Who's the guy that subbed to him for a while? Oh, uh, Aiden Ross. No, K one of you guys. Oh, KSI. oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Sneeko. Are you talking about? No, 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 no. One of you guys were, were following Andrew Tate for a uh, while, Logan. right? Oh, Logan. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was yeah him. He's in it. Andrew Tate, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 put, his is, yeah. I put his video on his, on his thing. There's a lot of people that are into it. Uh, most of the celebs, though, in fact, some I cannot name, uh, they, they're saying, look, we saw what happened to Kyrie. It's a little dicey. We don't want it because they're afraid yeah. of what might happen. I mean, Shaq had to renounce, you know, he had to renounce this for a while because his sponsors, I think Arizona Tea came after him. Oh, yeah. wow. So, so you've, had, you've had celebrities come up to you and say that 
you know, they support the flat earth theory and they believe in it, oh, but yeah. they just don't want to come out publicly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. I, I had a guy from, I'm not going to name the, the military show. He came up to me when, when I was shooting at uh, Shane Dawson's thing. And uh, Shane Dawson wasn't there. It was, Jared was there. And he comes up to me afterwards and he shakes my hand. He goes, I was never here. <laughs> and I'm going, okay. Damn. Yeah, Damn. it happens. There's a wow. lot of uh, closet flat cla- 90% of our, our guys are still closet. If somebody told me I was never here, I would be like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, because he doesn't, you know, in Hollywood, you don't want to bl- blow yeah, the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. he They're just blacklisted. started. Yeah, you know, but I've never been told, like, I wasn't here. Like, <laughs> Oh. Well, not in a government section. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. like a wasn't like a, a like actually a, I had like a spy <laughs> that that came and maybe so. at a party someone said they weren't supposed to be. Oh there. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, there's <laughs> I that. Get that. Well, I, I can't thank you guys enough. Oh yeah, no, yeah. Thanks. we can't thank you, you enough. Is, thank you. If yeah. there's any if there's any resources you need, uh, anything at all, if there's any examples, it's like hey, what about this? Because that's what the follow ups are. And your comment sections will be like, what about this? Or how does this work? And you know we've we've heard them so hey, uh-huh. may, maybe we can get a part bring, two yeah bring you right back I'd be back. happy to be, oh, I okay. I would I would love yeah, to it was a pleasure hey, having you well, on no it's if you if you made it this far and if you have more questions drop them down below drop them down Our below messages. Yeah. all of his socials will be in the description too yeah message him directly He'll oh, yeah. answer if he wants to yeah 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 but no I don't I don't mind I mean I get a lot of questions but there's a lot I, what I try to tell people I told him this in the last book which is don't let me leave you with this. If you like your life the way it is now, if everything's, you know, everything's awesome, thumbs up, great. You wake up every day, don't look at this. <laughs> because, you know, it is like the matrix in that. Because you get to a point where you will not be able to turn back. Because once you see it, you can't unsee it. We have a 99% retention rate. That's bigger than, yeah. than any organized oh, wow. religion. Because one, because we didn't break it out. I didn't break the globe for you. I didn't convince you or persuade you. You broke it yourself. So how are you going to put it back together when you broke it? Yeah, that's true. So people that get into it, yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, thank you for watching and thank that you for one. listening. Mark Sargent, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. You. Love you, guys.